The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the second Sunday after the Epiphany. It's from 1 Samuel chapter 3. This time we're looking especially at verses 2 to 9, where it says, One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. My dear friends in Christ, when our reading starts out by saying that Eli the high priest's eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, you could probably imagine that what was often the case, or maybe what happened every once in a while, was that during the middle of the night, Eli would call Samuel, and Samuel would have to help Eli out in some way or another. When Samuel heard the Lord calling him this particular night, well, his assumption was that it was Eli. Our reading says Samuel ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. When Eli said, I did not call, go and lie down, Samuel maybe had to wonder if he was dreaming or if he was hearing things or, or maybe if Eli was just simply becoming a bit forgetful. When Samuel went to lie down, then what happened is that the Lord called him a second time. And again, Samuel immediately got up and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But as before, Eli said, No, it wasn't me, sent him back to bed again. Well, when the Lord called Samuel a third time, Samuel didn't just roll over and think that Eli was crazy or something like that or just give up. Instead, what he did is he went to Eli. He may, we maybe would have been tempted under those circumstances to just roll over, but not Samuel. He went and he was listening to what he thought Eli was saying. But this time when he got to Eli, Eli recognized what was really happening here, that it was the Lord who was calling to Samuel. And so he told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. God's word and his calling of Samuel was something that so was so important that God repeatedly called to him. However, our reading here says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. This isn't to say that Samuel wasn't a believer at this particular time. Rather, it's saying that Samuel, when he heard this voice, he didn't recognize it to be the Lord. And, and that's understandable because God hadn't spoken to him yet 
like this. And so when Samuel heard someone calling, it just made sense to him that it would have been Eli. But this wasn't just Eli speaking to him, looking for some help at night. This was God speaking to Samuel, God talking to Samuel. And it was important that Samuel listen when the Lord spoke to him. And it's also important that we listen when the Lord speaks to us. When God speaks to us, it's not just ordinary conversation. When we're involved in plain old con conversation with friends or acquaintances, when we're talking about sports or politics or the weather or what we think should be happening in this world, that's just our opinions. But here in this instance, this was God speaking. This was God speaking and what God says goes. Saul, the first Israelite king, he learned that the hard way because there was a time when God spoke to him and God told him that he was supposed to fight against the Amalekite people and, and he was supposed to destroy the people. He wasn't supposed to take hostages. He wasn't supposed to take plunder, but he did take hostages and he did take plunder. And well, when he did that, he ended up under God's judgment because he didn't listen to what God had to say. He didn't totally destroy the people like he was supposed to. That was God's just judgment on a people that had rejected him. But Saul was told in this instance, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than to sacrifice. Same, Saul came up with the excuse when when he was caught not destroying things, saying, well, I'll sacrifice it to God. But God said, no, listen to what I have to say. So let's learn from Saul's bad example. Let's learn from his bad example. When God speaks to us, his words aren't just ordinary conversation that can go in one ear and out the other. It's not just opinions. But when God speaks to us, what his words do is, well, they convict us of our sin. They tell us of our Savior and instruct us on how we'll want to live as believing children of God. It's important for us to listen when God speaks to us. Those words shouldn't go in one ear and out the other because as the Apostle Peter said, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. So listen when God speaks to you and be blessed. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, may we always listen when you speak to us because you have the words of eternal life. We pray in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.